What's up, Penn Nation? Aloha, everybody. You're now tuned in to yet another edition of BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. As always, I'm your host, Jay Kinch. We're back with another great episode, a lot of good conversations. I'd like to preface this episode with saying it was originally more stacked. We had a lot of great things lined up. However, with the recent news that uh, a big fight at UFC 226 had been pulled, uh, we scrambled, we had to redo some interviews, and uh, we've got you the best possible outcome that that we could come to here. Uh, We were also supposed to have Matt Brown on the show this week. However, right around the time that we were going to record, he was about to go under the knife for his surgery. We were originally planning to get an update on his surgery. But again, it just so happened that when we were going to record with him, he was about to go under the knife. So hopefully we'll be able to get that update and have that interview for you in the coming weeks. So before we jump into things, you guys know what's up, BJPenn.com. We are your premier source for all things mixed martial arts. Breaking news, exclusive content, viral videos, all the hot topics. You know what's up, BJPenn.com forward slash MMA news. Make sure you bookmark us. Set up alerts, follow us on social media, stay up to date on the sport that you love in mixed martial arts. If it's newsworthy, we've got it. BJPenn.com, the fighter's voice. So as for tonight's guest list, as I mentioned, it it dwindled a bit. We were originally going to have a really stacked show for you. However, we still have a great show and some awesome conversations. We're going to kick things off with one of the top welterweights in the world, really good friend of the show, Jorge Masvidal. He's been getting called out by several guys, most recently Leon Edwards, who's coming off of a win over Donald Cowboy Cerrone. We're going to get his reaction to that, talk about the possibility of that fight uh, coming to fruition, what he plans for moving forward, if it's a matchup that interests him against Leon, and a whole lot more. Always a great conversation with Gamebred. And then following Gamebred, we originally had this long, awesome conversation with Platinum Mike Perry Leading up to this showdown with Yancey Medeiros, we previewed the fight, discussed the matchup. It was a great conversation. However, with the news that Yancey has been removed from UFC 226, Platinum was so kind to give us some more time this week. We spoke to him for about 10 minutes, got his reaction to Yancey being removed from the fight, the uh, potential replacements that, that he has on the table now, who he'd prefer, if anyone at all, and if he plans to still be on this card so we've got the exclusive on that. Big update from Platinum Mike Perry on the way after Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Following Platinum Mike Perry, one of the hottest prospects in the business, the devastator himself, Dominic Reyes, taking the light heavyweight division by storm so far in his UFC career. He's coming off that win over Jared Cannonier down in UFC Chile. Since then, he had called out Jordan Johnson. Then he decided that Jordan Johnson is in his rearview mirror. Now with OSP's big win over the weekend in Singapore, Dominic Reyes has decided that his sights are now set on OSP. So we're going to talk about that matchup, the possibility of that fight coming together, whether Dominic's management has heard any news on that, other potential matchups for him going forward, and a whole lot more. Always a pleasure to speak with Dominic as well. And then closing out tonight's show, UFC veteran, tough alumni, best-selling author, a man who has really taken the ups and downs of his career and made the most of them. Set to make his PFL debut next Thursday, July 5th, in Washington, D.C. Eddie Truck Gordon joins the show for the first time to preview this uh, PFL debut, discuss the excitement that is the Professional Fighters League, what they bring to the table, and the possibilities of them changing the game of mixed martial arts for everyone across the board. We'll discuss the ups and downs of his career, how he's made the most of it, what he's been up to outside of the cage and outside of competition. We'll also discuss his time at Cerro Longo, working with all the beasts over there, being under the tutelage of guys like Ray Longo and Matt Serra throughout his career, and a whole lot more. Again, first time speaking with Eddie Gordon, and it was a great conversation. Uh, I look forward to having him on again soon. So, regardless of the setback of Yancey being removed from the card at UFC 226, And the interview that we did with him uh, kind of falling wayside. We still got a great show for you. Awesome conversations. BJPenn.com radio, the fighter's voice. We're going to kick off this episode with good friend of the show, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 
from Backyards to Bright Lights, one of the realest guys in the business and good friend of BJPen.com. Please welcome back Gamebred himself, Jorge Masvidal. What's the good uh, What's the good word, Gamebred? How you doing today, man? Chilling, man. Just got about the gym. Um, feeling uh, the, the wears and tears of the wrestling practice. But uh, just getting ready to go to the next practice that I got, you know. Cool, I'm man. Just, I, I, this is what I live for. I just uh, I love training, man. Right. The grind never ends. Never. Never, never. So, real quick, man, how was your Father's Day? Did you do anything special with the family? No, Father's Day, I just like to chill, lay back, no no commitments to do anything, but just, you know, either be at my house, maybe I'll go eat or something, but I'm always on the move, so um, on Father's Day, if it's up to me, I usually just kick it at home or something like that, you know, I don't want no cake or nothing crazy, I just want to relax. Right, right. Take take the Father's Day for the father. Just let me chill. Don't make me do anything. I know how that goes, man. So, uh, listen, real quick, before we uh, before we jump into things here, you know, I mentioned uh, Backyards to Bright Lights. I know we talked about it before. You had said things were kind of on hold. Is there any updates on that coming out? We're still working on it. We're gonna, still working on certain permissions from people like, uh, you know, like if you were in the show, you got to sign waivers. So there's still some, some waivers going back and forth, things like that. But we're 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 nearing completion. Yeah. Cool. We're, we're pretty close to. Uh, I'm hoping by I don't know maybe September October the piece will be out. We're thinking I don't know it could be soon if everything falls into play. Very good, man. Very good. So listen, there's plenty to cover as always. Uh, but let's start with the recent callouts, man. Last time we spoke, you were trying to get a fight for July or August. You said you were ready to whoop some ass, regardless of who it was. Uh, since then, a few guys have said your name. Most recently, Leon Edwards. You told MMA Junkie that that he isn't quite there yet, but you'll take the fight. Uh, since then, he said he's waiting on the call from the UFC. Is there any news you can give us on that? No, there's absolutely no news yet. It's still um, my management has not been contacted on this fight, and uh, or a date either. Much, much so for the part, you know. So we're just waiting. So we get a date at least, or even if it's going to happen, I, I don't know, you know, because we're not the matchmakers at the end of the day, you know. Right, right, right. Were you surprised at all by him calling you out after beating Cowboy over the weekend? No, because I, I don't have a fight. I think I'm one of the only top 10 dudes that doesn't have a fight or, or that's not injured or waiting on the sidelines for I don't know what. So kind of makes sense. Now, what did you make of his his win over Cowboy? If you saw the fight, you know, were you impressed I, with the guy? I didn't see the fight, man. I was uh, I was catching him my my seasons and and sleeping. Right. Uh, I think that was Sunday, right? Was it Sunday? <laughs> yeah, Sunday morning. I didn't even watch him either, yeah, man. It was too early. <laughs> Sunday mornings are are sacred to me. That's the one day I get to sleep in a little bit later, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. You know, I'm gonna take full advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. But regardless of that, is this a fight that interests you? And, and would a win over him set you up for the bigger fights that you're really after? Uh, well, like I said in every uh, interview that they've asked me, if that is the biggest ranked guy that I can get my hands on, then that's who it is, you know? It doesn't really matter to me. If, if they were to offer me like a number five dude, number four dude, well, of course I'm going to say yes to that over Leon, you know, and just because it's mathematical sense. Right, right, right. Now, you've also said that you asked for some big names in the UFC – said that they don't want you murdering certain people. Can you elaborate that on, on that at all? Can't can't elaborate. They, they asked me not to even mention those names, but a couple of names were tossed up and uh, couldn't get the fight, so whatever. Yeah, I mean... Still don't got a fight. Still don't got a word on this fight, you know, so... But why don't you okay? Hello? My bad, man. Yeah, no, 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 no problem, no problem. Uh, now, listen, I, I know you wanted the rematches with Meyer Thompson... Unfortunately, neither of those guys seem to be available at the at the moment. Uh, you've been pretty clear that the division is kind of tied up, and, and you'll take whoever you can get your hands on. If that's the case, if Leon is your best option at this point, or is there another matchup that makes more sense for you? Um, I mean, guys, like, I don't know, bro. It's fucking... I don't even know what to tell you on that one. Right. <laughs> it, 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 Wait, if I could get my hands on Usman, I'd love it, but I know he's not going to fight him. So I want to talk like real fights that could possibly happen, you know, not fantasy files, you know? So I, I don't know, man. If a Magni would be a perfect fight because he's number seven, but he won't fight me at 170, at 155. I know what. You know, you're saying that, huh? At 170, 180, you know? Because I, 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 I said if the fight was in two weeks' notice and I didn't want to take it at 170. The time I was heavy, I was lifting. Now I'm ready to do 170. What's his excuse now, you know? 
Right, right. And he's coming off of a easy breezy win, no injuries. I mean, he should be ready to go again. Or you would think so anyway. Now, how frustrating is it that, that when you're injured, plenty of people mention your name, and now that you're ready to go, everybody's tied up or injured? Uh, I mean, it's just the luck of the draw, you know. I didn't. I, I thought by now the title would be cleared. A lot of 170 fights happened, so I thought I'd be able to get matchup with dates, you know. I thought by now they'd, they'd be like, hey, you know, you're going to fight this guy since this guy won, this guy lost, type scenarios, but uh, it wasn't quite like that. Just right. waiting on my next, on my next victim. Right, and I and I know you mentioned uh, you know Magny and, and how you've been after that fight. I know last time we spoke, you kind of told me that it, it, it seems like that, that's that's uh, water under the bridge. You're kind of looking past that fight now. You've tried so many times that at this point, it's it, it, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, I don't, you know, I it's not gonna happen. But I'll mention it just because in the top ten, and people always ask me why isn't this fight happening. It's not because of me, you know. I'm, re- I'm ready. I'm here. Right. Usman said that I didn't want to fight him. That's the, I've, I've heard a lot of wild tales. That's one of the wildest ones I've heard, you know? This guy comes straight out of the wild, wild west, you know? <laughs> this guy, no, he's, he's. I don't know if he's bipolar, delusional. When when was I offered a fight with you and I turned it down? Or, you know, have I had any fights since my last fight in, in November that you could even say that? But now that I'm ready to go, he, he wants to sit in his butt and I can not wait for what? You know, but I'm here. Any of the top tens hearing this, have your management, contact my management. We don't have to go to Twitter wars and who's got the nicer car or whatever. I can care less. Just, just get in the cage and settle it, man. Yeah, and it seems like uh, after all that was said between you guys, he wants to fight with RDA, right? Who wants to fight with RDA? Uh, Usman, right? Or no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe he called out uh, Dos Anjos. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who he's fighting and who he's not fighting, you know. So, are you still looking at late July, early August? You know, it seems like it's looking like August, considering the that it's the end of June, right? Well, it's not really up to me, I think, because uh, I don't know if Leon would need uh, four weeks or eight weeks to say if it was Leon. How about if it was a complete other person? I, I don't know what the date's going to be like, so I'm just kind of at the mercy of the matchmakers, man. Right, you're kind of stuck in limbo, right? Yeah, just wait for, for the most attractive opportunity I get my hands on. Well, regardless, man, I, I certainly hope that you get a fight signed soon and, and we get to see Game oh, Bread back happen. in action. Yeah, it's going to happen, man. Now, you, you, you sh- all the hardcore fans get behind me and start retweeting, and before I know it, I'm getting a phone call, you know? Right, absolutely, absolutely. You know, you shared that highlight of the fight with KJ Noons recently, man. What a performance. I'd imagine that you're looking to put on another show like that when you return. I'm definitely trying to hurt somebody's feelings, man. Um, I just, I, I miss fighting a lot. I just want to get in there. This is the longest day I've, I've had since uh, I joined the UFC. So I'm eager to get in there. I'm pretty damn healthy, so I can't wait. Now, changing gears here for a moment, I know you were cage side for Colby's fight, cornering him. Uh, give us your thoughts on his performance and, and how happy were you to see him, uh, you know, capture that title and share that moment with him. I called it. I think I'm pretty, I called it on your show as well as MMA Junkie. I called exactly what was going to happen, and it pretty much went exactly the plan. You know, I know uh, the type of athlete that Kobe is, the type of individual that he is, and I just know he'd be able to overwhelm him with the pressure. Yeah, man. You it went according according to plan, you know. For sure, for sure. You called it. Kobe, Kobe had the same same uh, same sentiment as well, and that it went exactly to plan. But uh, when I talked to him the day after the fight, you know, he sang your praises as always and told me, you know, he talked about the journey you guys have been on all these years together and how it all came to fruition. I'm sure you felt the same way. Oh, hell yeah, bro. We've been on the grind for a while, pushing each other. You know, and it, it's just like uh, from from a coaching standpoint, and not, and not this RDA because he's a stud too, man, but uh, I was just so sure of it, you know. Obviously, I betted money on Kobe and stuff, and um, I was just so sure of the fight because of his, his physicalities, his style, the way that he could put pressure on people. It was like a Sherlock bet for me, you know. <laughs> you know, I asked him about that going into the fight uh, fight week. I think he said uh, he had people busting his balls because he was the underdog beforehand, and then I think the the odds changed, right? He became the favorite right yeah. right before the yeah. fight. Yeah, they were always pretty close. It was never, I think, too crazy. I think maybe, I think at one point maybe Kobe was a plus 165. Or yeah. He's plus 165 at the most, I think. Right. I was hoping it would have been like a 3-1, something crazy. <laughs> Right, make some money on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people had it 
two and two going into the, into the fifth, man. I personally only gave RDA one round. How did you guys see it from the corner? It was crazy because uh, I thought Kobe was winning almost every round. And since you got to be a coach, you're not being, you're not judging as a friend, and you're being a coach. We got to assume that he did get round four, you know, because he did score two takedowns. But Kobe ended up by scrambling, staying on top, and, and having a decent amount of ride time as well. The, the round was pretty close, but we gave that one to RDA. We knew we couldn't give up the fifth just in case. I didn't think that one through three we had lost one round because number one, the first round, and the third round, and the second round, they look exactly the same to me. Just take down, take downs up against the cage. RDA ends up getting back to his feet up against the cage. Eats a couple elbows, gets taken down eventually. You know, they look the same to me. Right, right. So I thought we had one through three locked. Fourth, RDA's, and then the fifth, uh, I thought was our round big time. For sure, for sure. Great performance by Colby. And I mean, seeing your teammate accomplish that, that's got to be a ton of motivation for you to do the same, right? Always, man. Always. It's, it's, it's a lifelong journey grinding that we've been doing, you know, and, uh, both knew it back then, you know, we both got special abilities when it comes to fighting, so we're just gonna kind of set up a major dynasty, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Make the UFC great again. Uh, listen, I hate to even bring the guy, bring the dude up every time we speak, but what was your reaction to how Bisping acted towards Colby during that post-fight interview? You know, he's a sour bitch, whatever, you know? That dude, you know what I'm saying? You know who that dude is and what he brings? He's just a sour little bitch, you know? Oh, I can't even get mad at him, man. He, he just plays his character role. You just can call his every move. I can make that guy react however I want him to react. He's just a fucking moron, you know? You, you can tell he was going to do something like that. But, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was just... It was such a bummer, man. It's like, you know, you're, 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 you're on... You're messing up this guy's interview, you know? Right, exactly. Guy just won the title and you're making it about you. Like, what the hell? Such a shame. Such a shame. But again, man, you know, one step closer to making the UFC great again. You know, the one portion is complete. Now we've got to get some some gold around your waist, right? I'm getting the gold, man. I won't ever sleep the type of sleep I, I can only get if I have the belt strapped to my waist. Um, I'm injury free. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to compete, you know. I'm just uh, I'm hoping to get a big name, a big fight sometime by uh, the end of this week or next week. We'll have a, a definite on an opponent. So you're hoping that that soon, within this week or next, that we'll have something announced and and yeah, and, and yeah, an announcement doesn't mean that I'm fighting in like four or five weeks. It just means that I would like an announcement so I know more or less what we're doing. Right, and I I know I know you wanted sometime in the summertime, but I mean, how late's too late? Are you willing to maybe wait till September for for a big name? Uh, yeah, I'd wait till September. I'd wait till September when I you know just get in a little bit better shape. It doesn't really matter. You know? Right, right. And uh, what what kind of form should everybody expect to see Game Bread in when you finally come back? A different form. A different, comp- uh, a lot of different things are gonna are gonna be added to the to the to the character. If I'm like a video game character, I just jumped up a couple points. I'm I'm almost like a cheat hack at this point. <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Uh, in conclusion, anything you'd say to the top 10 guys to encourage them to take a damn fight with you? I just fuck, bro. Say it too often, you know, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. Whether I have to start at the bottom, like I said, and work my way up, or if I'm going to start at the top and work my way down, I'm going to get everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a nice little win streak. I'm going to get my rematch with Maya. I'm going to take care of business there. And I'm going to do the same with Thompson and just prove that I deserve a title shot at some point you know i just i got a lot of work ahead of me to do and i'm looking forward to it well i certainly am as well i can't wait for your return lord knows the ufc needs some more realness uh and th- you know that is for damn sure always appreciate the time green game bread always a pleasure to speak with you as well my friend any shout outs before we let you go shout out to dice they holding me down for a minute uh with the food they've been they've been taking care of me for a while so big shout out to dice man always hooking me up showing me up all right, cool, man. Again, greatly appreciate the time. Looking forward to this fight getting announced. Hopefully we can catch up uh, once it does get announced. And, uh, again, man, I, like I said, the division needs you, bro. So hopefully something gets done soon. Uh, you have a wonderful afternoon, my friend. You too, man. And a shout-out to my number one sponsor, God Almighty. The, this journey's been amazing. So I always got to thank God for everything that, uh, that I've got to experience in my life. Thank you for having me on, man. You have a great day, man. You too, brother. All right, later. Game Bread's back. He's ready to go. For the love of God, let's get him a fight. You heard him. Get on Twitter. Do what you can. Retweet. Tweet the company, the UFC, Dana White, the matchmakers. 
Let's get him the fight that not only he deserves, but the fight that he wants, whether that be Leon Edwards, Darren Till, whoever the hell it is. Let's get the man a fight. I'm very excited to see him get back into competition. Again, good friend of the show. Always a pleasure to speak with Gamebred. But let's keep it moving like we always do. Again, this is a shorter conversation than we originally had, but nonetheless, we greatly, greatly appreciate Mike Perry coming on short notice to discuss the devastating news that is the withdrawal of Yancey Medeiros from the fight at UFC 226 next weekend. We're going to get his reaction here in just a second. Talk about potential matchups, like I said earlier. Always a pleasure to speak with Platinum. And again, can't thank him enough for coming on short notice. This is BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. Coming up next, Platinum Mike Perry. So I guess first things first, you know, tell us about your, first of all, your initial reaction. Did you get the news from the UFC or did you have to read it online? No, my manager texted me. Said, yes, he's out. We're looking, and I was like, "Fuck! I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen a long time ago when this camp started." Because first of all, Jackson Week just beat him with Cowboy, and then I'm training with Jackson's. But I mean, maybe his, his rib really broke or whatever. Maybe he was sparring hard and somebody cracked it. Things happen, you know. I have injuries too, but that never stops me from showing up. I do what I do. And and I go and I fight, man, no matter who it is. So I knew he was going to pull out, though, a long time ago. And I didn't say nothing on Twitter because I was like, I don't want to jinx myself, fuck around, and break my ankle, and then I'm the one who's got to pull out. So you've had the suspicion that this fight was going to fall through from the beginning? Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Now, I mean, his his statement online seems to be sincere. He was very apologetic towards you. But like you mentioned, it seems that fighters, every single time you guys go out there, you've got some kind of nagging injury. Every time. So, I mean, when you read his statement, do, do, do you buy the sincerity of it? or? I, you know, I, I haven't read his statement. What did he say? Uh, you know, he was incredibly apologetic to you. Uh, you know, he was like, listen, I have a fracture. I, I will always go into a fight injured if I have to, but this one I really can't. He was very apologetic to you and your fans, his fans, of course, as well. And, uh, you know, he was like, I'm sorry I let everybody down. And uh, he, he seemed very, uh, you know, uh, empathetic towards the situation. Well, so what? You're a sorry-ass motherfucker. That's what you are. You're a sorry motherfucker. Keep being fucking sorry, you sorry ass. So, looking forward now, obviously everybody was looking forward to this matchup. You and I had talked about it. It had potential to be a great fight. Uh, when I spoke to him last night, uh, you know, he didn't mention any word of this fracture. He, he talked about how he was very excited for this matchup and so on. Uh, but looking ahead now... You, you've got a couple options. Paul Felder has thrown his name into the hat. You know, what are you hoping for? Would you prefer Paul Felder? I know Emil Mech has, has put his name in the hat as well. You know, what are you thinking? What are you guys going to prefer going forward? Uh, you know, hopefully if they can find a replacement. My job at the end of the day is to show up on fight night, step in that octagon and perform uh, to fight for all the fans who were looking forward to seeing me fight. And... I always show up, and I always put on, and uh, no matter who they call me and ask me for, listen, they're going to call, they're going to drop a name, and I'm going to say, yep, let's go. You know, we were trying to make the Cowboy fight happen, but I like I was on the phone with Cowboy, and we were talking, and he was like, oh my ass, motherfuckers, you bring it. And I was like, well, let's fucking do it. He just had, he's having a baby right now. And, you know, we were both looking to get that paid checks, but they're going to get me an opponent. They're going to call. They're going to say, here's the name. What do you say? And I say, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, I'm not the matchmaker. I'm not the one who gets to pick. They have options, and they're the one who picks who they want to see me fight between Dana, between Sean Shelby. They got their choices. They're going to make their choice. And I'm going to say yes because I'm ready to go in there next week and fucking fight. Right. So at this point for you, all the frustration and, and, you know, going through this camp, I know you could give a shit who it is at the end of the day regardless. 
But at this point, with all the frustrations of going through camp, being you know looking forward to a big fight, you're gonna say yes to whoever it is, and regardless of the matchup, you really don't care at this point. Absolutely not. I'm fully prepared for any man that stands across from me who weighs in Friday morning at 170 pounds, same as me. Um, you know, I was texting my manager. I was like, "Tell Till we can meet at 180." <laughs> I don't want to cut the weight anyway. Let's go up a little bit, but he's probably fucking two hundred five, and, and you know and he's number two, so I don't know. But you know, I'm willing, uh, always willing and ready, man. I'm just if they could have been like, hey, fucking John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you were actually on the phone with Cowboy Cerrone, and he was down for the fight, but obviously, you know, timing couldn't line up, and he's just coming off of a, of a hard-fought loss, so that doesn't make sense. But, man, that would have been a great one for the fans. No, nah, he was ready, man. They offered it to him, but uh, he happens to be suspended, and he's got that cut over his eye. I knew the Las Vegas uh, State Commission would not allow that with that fresh cut like that because... I was damn sure going to go for it. <laughs> right, right. Now, the reaction to, uh, to to Felder, you know, putting his name in the hat, obviously he got his fight pulled. James Vick is going to fight uh, Justin Gaethje now in Lincoln, Nebraska. So he's without a fight. And the fans seem to really like that matchup. Is that one you would be excited for? I know you said you'll fight anybody, but, you know, as, in regards to styles and opponents, would you be excited to fight Paul? Absolutely. He's gonna come sling it out. He's gonna. Uh, we're gonna have a little, little kickboxing Muay Thai fight in the octagon. And you know, we we all know what happened last time I fought a lightweight. I'll take it. I'll take that paycheck. Give me a new UFC contract with this victory, and uh, I'll be looking at more money later this year. For sure. For sure. So I mean, at this point, would he be in the front running? Or I mean, obviously, you said that. You know, you've got uh, you've got ambitions of fighting Darren Till, whoever they'll get you at this point. But is he in the front running for you? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a toss up between him and Emil, uh, but I don't know who they're gonna call and offer. Right. Well, you and Emil have a little bit of a history. Would you be Would you be uh, you know, more more inclined to maybe go in there and shut him up for all the stuff that he's been saying back and forth with you? It It doesn't matter. Um, who the opponent is, man, it really doesn't. I'm not inclined to take one person's life more than the next. It's just right. whoever comes in there to fight me, I got to cut that paycheck. We cashing checks and breaking necks, baby. Let's go. It doesn't matter who. <laughs> All right. So, you know, based on uh, the conversations you've had with your management and your management with the UFC, how quickly are you hoping to have an announcement about the replacement fight? I believe today, I believe it will be done tonight by some time. Okay. Very good, man. So, at the end of the day, we will s- still see Platinum Mike Perry on UFC 226. Hey, that's all that matters, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, for some strange reason, they decided to pull you from this card, put you on another card. Would you be open to that? Or are you, you know, focused on staying on this damn card? No, I want to be on this card, man. This is the card to be on. I want to be in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile. I got people coming out. We got plans for Vegas. So we're going to go. We're going to fight. We're going to turn up after. For sure, for sure. All right, listen, man, I greatly appreciate you, you know, speaking with us on short notice like this. Huge bummer on this fight, but I know that the replacement will be will be just as good. You always bring the fight. Always exciting to watch you compete. Uh, so I guess in conclusion, man, um, Tell all the fans out there, you know, that that they're not going to miss anything. You'll still be out there kicking ass and taking names. Absolutely. Thank you to BJ Penn Radio for getting my word out there for the people. And people, I know you was excited. I hyped the fight, but I'm still in the fight. It doesn't matter. It never mattered who the opponent was. I was the one who was bringing all the hype and... And you know how I fight every time. I come to bring the war, so let's go. All right, man, for sure. We're looking forward to it. Hopefully the announcement comes soon, and uh, 
regardless of the matchup. I know it's going to be a great one. Thanks again for the time, man, and uh, hopefully uh, things work out for the better. Thank you, sir. All right, buddy. Later. As you would expect from a guy like Platinum, he's taking this all in stride, still plans to go out there in Vegas July 7th and put on a hell of a show for the fans, regardless of the opponent, whether it be Paul Felder, Emil Mech, we'll see how things shake out here in just a couple of days. As you heard him mention, he hopes to have an announcement tonight, which is the 28th of June. Let's hope that that announcement comes sooner rather than later. But again, regardless of opponent, you know the Platinum's going to go out there and put on a show. And I am very excited to see him back in competition next weekend, July 7th at UFC 226. So let's keep it moving. Let's keep rolling on here. Coming up next, BJPenn.com radio, the fighter's voice. Red hot prospect in the, nope. Red hot prospect in the UFC's light heavyweight division. Good friend of BJPenn.com. The devastator himself, Dominic Reyes. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show the number 11th ranked light heavyweight in the UFC and one of the hottest prospects in the division, as well as the company itself, the Devastator, Dominic Reyes. What's the good word, Dom? How you doing today, brother? What's up, man? Good word is is love today, man. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and love, man. You sound like a hippie today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so working on the ninja skills in the gym as always? Yes, of course. Ninja skills are always improving, you know, trying to get to that that champion level. So, yeah. For sure, man, for sure. So, listen, the last time we spoke was just after the KO of uh, Jared Cannonier. You called out Jordan Johnson after the fight. It was a fight you wanted based on some trash talk and the fact that you want to compete against a wrestler. Now, after the card in Singapore, you have your sights set on Ovince St. Preux. Uh, OSP said he'd fight anywhere, anytime. You accepted that challenge. Tell us about the decision to go after Ovince now. Um, well, like I said uh, in our last interview, um, Jordan's kind of in the rearview mirror now. Right. Um, and I'm, look- I'm looking ahead, and uh, Ovince is he's a guy that I feel I match up really well with, and uh, he wants to fight, so let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he wants to fight me, but shoot, I'm anyone, so let's do it. Now, in regards to the matchup and, you know, how you guys match up stylistically, do you feel like this is a challenging fight for you? I do. I mean, he's, he's always St. Pru still, you know. <laughs> he's a very accomplished fighter, and I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but I do feel like I match up uh, pretty well against him. Now, has your management been in touch with the UFC about the fight? And if so, has there been any interest shown by the promotion? Um, yes, and... That's classified, I believe. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but we'll see what happens, man. I, I, I'm ready to get back in there and mix it up. So hopefully they get someone for me soon. Hopefully it'll Vince. So we'll see. Right, right. What did you think of his submission win over Tyson Pedro? I thought it was smooth and slick. I thought it was uh, not very smart by Pedro to try to grapple when he had him hurt. But, hey, that's his... That's his prerogative. Right, right. Uh, OSP is ranked number seven. He, he's finished Shogun Hua. He's gone the distance with John Jones. A win over him would, would be big for your career and put you one step closer to that title. Uh, however, you know anybody that's paying attention knows that you're a risky matchup for anybody in the division at 205. That being said, you know what do you think the likelihood is that he takes the fight? Um, I'm going to say 60-40 that he doesn't take it at this point. Um. I kind of see where he his head's at as well. Uh, he's he's in the top top ten. You know, he's maybe thinking about a title run. You know, fighting someone like me is very dangerous, like you said. Um, and uh, if he's going to make a title run, he's got to go forward. You know, fight guys like maybe Jimmy or, or Blankowitz. But uh, he did open his mouth and say some things he probably should shouldn't have said. So I'm just responding back to what he said right <laughs> right <laughs> right right anywhere anytime and you're definitely you're definitely the guy to step up and take that opportunity um but you know you kind of mentioned it there he's in the same situation as yourself rather than look back at uh at jordan he's looking forward as well looking to climb the ranks again yes i, I believe i mean 
it only makes sense. I'm, I'm a reasonable man, so I mean, right, it's right. right there. <laughs> right now, your challenge if it doesn't is- happen. It doesn't happen. I won't be too upset, but I do want to fight him. So yeah, and I think it would be a great matchup for the division and for the fans. And I know you not you and I have talked about this at length before, but. You know, you got to give those guys the opportunity. You know, the guy coming up, you got to give him that opportunity. So hopefully OSP is the kind of guy to uh, to grant you such an opportunity. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm very excited about it either way. So Now, your challenge was for uh, UFC 228. Uh, that's the Dallas card in September. What made you request the fight for 228? Was it, uh, you know, just the great venue and likely to be a big card? Or was that ideal timing for you? Uh, it's just ideal timing. Um, coming off this fight, you know, I had a few things I have to get ta- I had to get taken care of, so my camp would have been limited for uh, the LA card, so I had to uh, adjust my schedule a bit. Now, was there just some like some nagging stuff you were uh, some working on, or uh... yeah, it's just some stuff that I'd rather get cleared up now than uh, later before it comes a real problem. For sure, man. You hear about that with fighters all the time. It's like when you have that opportunity to take care of a nagging injury, you got to do it when you can because if not, you know, you get booked with fights and that continues and continues and you never really get it taken care of and then at one point it becomes a serious problem. Exactly. And I feel like that's a problem a lot of young fighters that aren't in the UFC are are faced with. Um, Training and fighting on injuries that either can't afford to get paid for or you just can't afford to stop fighting you know so right and that's a catch-22 of it like you need the money to pay for the operation but you also need to fight so you know to make that money so it's like you know which do you do do you do you focus on healing yourself and not making money or do you take that fight possibly get more injured to make the money to get the surgery i mean that's quite the conundrum man (laughs) yeah it it is for a lot of fighters um luckily for me i have the luxury of being in the ufc and i could make those decisions before something starts getting out of hand so absolutely absolutely now you know if you if you if you don't feel comfortable doing so but you know what what is that nagging injury if you if you don't mind me asking um just just from kicking man kind of um in the last fight I threw a lot of kicks i don't know if you could tell <laughs> but but it, it kind of you know when you kick with that much force that 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 much uh things tend to get dislodged a little bit so in the fight something came up so right right well again better to get it taken care of now uh but if for some reason osp declines the fight like we were talking about he's looking ahead i know you're looking ahead now jordan johnson is in the rear view uh but you've mentioned patrick cummins is that a fight that would interest you as well absolutely i'd love to fight pat that would be another you know he's fought the champ as well you know uh it'd be good for the resume um, he's he's a wrestler. He's a tough wrestler at that too. So, yeah, I would love that matchup, but we'll see. Right. So, top picks right now, obviously OSP Patrick Cummins, but you'll take anybody ahead of you in the rankings. OSP Patrick Cummins, and I'll still take Jordan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> worst case scenario, you can't get the fight you want. You'll you'll gladly go out there and shut him up. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, listen, changing gears here for a moment, man. I wanted to get your take on Dana White's decision to move uh, back to the late weigh-ins. You know, there's been some backlash from a lot of fighters. Others don't seem to care. Where do you stand on it? Um, I thought about this long and hard. And it's it only benefits me um, for the later weigh-ins because I do it right. You know, I'm not, like, dying on the weigh-ins, the guys that have to die on the weigh-ins, that's going to be less time for them to rehydrate, less time to get their body back. So by the time fight comes, they're they're barely there, and I'm a hundred percent there. So really, so it is. you're you're taking an interesting standpoint. So it, you're just looking at it as, at a personal level. You're professional. You you go out there and make the weight every time, so it doesn't really matter to you. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it anyway. Either way, so. I'm not going to be upset about it. I mean, I'm going to look at it from the positive because it's really all that I can do. Right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, in the end of the day, it really is a pretty decent positive for me. I mean, I am a professional. Like you said, I show up on weight, ready to go. So I'll be ready. And my opponent, if he's cutting a lot, it's just it's going to suck for him. And those punches are going to hurt that much more when you don't have the fluid in your brain. 
Right, right. Well, you know, that's the biggest argument, you know, against moving it back is, is you know, having to stay dehydrated all day, having less time to rehydrate, and knowing all the stuff that we do these days about hydration of the brain. I feel like the UFC is kind of not thinking about the health of you guys, but rather less miss weight cuts, right? <laughs> it seems that way. It does. It does. Um, show must go on kind of thing, right? I mean, it's a big production. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, a lot so. of money as well. There's a lot of money involved, a lot of different things going on. Um, they got to look out for the bottom line. Right, right. We got we got to make weight, we got to fight, and we got to look out for our bottom line too. So as long as I do it right and I stay healthy with my weight cut, I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. Can't speak for everybody else in the UFC, but I can only speak for me. <laughs> right, and at the end of the day, like you're saying, I mean, it is an individual pursuit, and it is up to you as a professional to, to do what you need to do to make that weight and hydrate properly. So it is on the athlete themselves. I, I it is. It, is it does kind of suck, though, because, you know, I do like weighing in and then, like, eating. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know I, mean? I like having breakfast every day. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes, man. I, I'm. It's all good. So how, how does that work it's for you? It's just a small inconvenience. That's what it is. Just... How does that work for you in regards to like, you know, obviously with the early weigh-in, you could, you could get up, you know, get to your weight, go weigh in. And then, like you said, you can eat breakfast, do all of those things. But when the weigh-in's at 4 PM, I mean, do you just sleep all day as much as you can? Or how does that work? I mean, do you, are you up just cutting weight, more weight during the day? Or do you try to get on, on target the night before? How does that work for you? Well, the thing with getting on target the night before is it's kind of pointless because you still have to eat in the morning. Like right. You have to, unless right. you're it's a severe cut, you know what I mean? Um, but you have to have some kind of nutrients in the morning. I mean, you could get you get pretty close at night, have, you know, vitamins and good nutrients in the morning, and then, or just try to sleep as long as you can. Right. Wake up, <laughs> have a little snack, see where your weight's at. You know, decide if the snack's worth it or not. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you have to cut again during the day. Right. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. It, I've just uh, that that's always been uh, something I was that's curious about. That's the inconvenient about. part about it. That's like you now you have to be a tough guy and be there. Like, man, yeah, hungry and tired. Right. I'm just dehydrated. Right. And I'm I'm wondering how that's going to affect the promotional side of it because with the ceremonial weigh-ins later on. Guys are healthy, they're hydrated, they've been able to promote the fight a bit more. Now we're going to well, go back be, to seeing, like, Skeletor be, guys. Yeah, it'll be Skeletor guys and then more tension in the weigh-ins. That's true, too. That's true, too. A lot more yeah, tension. Because, I mean, you're, you're not even really... A lot of guys aren't even in the right mind. <laughs> right. You're so dehydrated and so tired that any little thing will set you off. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So you see a lot more uh, emotion coming out of these guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Listen, another I mean, off- personally, I get hangry. I mean, I don't know about you. <laughs> I, get, I get hangry from time to time. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> right. <laughs> now I have a guy in my face trying to talk crap, and we're fighting tomorrow. <laughs> right. Might, might spark a fuse. Right. You're looking at him like a big T-bone steak. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, another off-topic question here. Uh, you spoke with BJPenn.com's Jordan Colbert recently. I found it interesting that you said that MMA began as anger management for you. You know, you seem like a pretty chill guy, in my opinion. I'd really hate to see what, what angry Dom Rees or hangry Dom Rees is like in, in real life. Yeah, I mean, not everything doesn't always go according to plan, and there's shit that is out of your control that you can't you – there's nothing you can do about it, but deal with the deal with it. Like for me, it was not getting in the NFL, knowing I'm good enough, knowing I'm all that, but it didn't work out. There's nothing I can do about it. So when you just be angry and have all this anger built up, so instead I started training and let it go. And now I really understand how to you know approach situations and deal with things that aren't going my way. Absolutely, and and I know you and I have talked about this before, but this certainly is your calling based on the successes so far. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I love it, man. I freaking love this. Yeah. Every, every day is a, is a gift, man. I get up and I get to just train and worry about getting better. I don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah, you know, I was talking with Mike Perry about this uh, earlier in the week, 
And he was going on about that, you know, like I was, he's saying, oh, I was just hanging out with my buddy and he said he had to go to work. And I said, man, that sucks. I live this great life where, you know, I get to wake up late, train, do something I love all day long, you know, eat well, and then, and then enjoy my life. I don't have to work that nine to five like everybody else has to. And, um, it it truly is a blessing for you guys, right? It is. It really is. And it's, it's one of those, those things that it's, it's, by no means has it been easy to get here. You know, the 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 amateur roads, you know, when you're an amateur, it sucks. When you're in regional pros, it's pretty terrible. And it's just not anything sustainable until you get to either UFC or Bellator or yeah. a level where you're getting paid, you know, a real amount of money. Yeah, but once you get there, once all that hard once work you pays get there, off, you know. If, if and when you get there. <laughs> right, right. It's right. like amazing. Totally amazing. That's the damn That's truth, the man. That's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people look at this and say, I was talking about this the other day with some some friends at my uh, my weekly dark game, and they were, they were talking about, you know, uh, uh, the armchair quarterbacks and, the and you know, the guys that are always analyzing shit, and you see people on TV – talking about football or whatever sport it may be that haven't ever played it a day in their life. And I say, man, you guys should see what that's like in the fight business. You get these people online. Oh, you should have done this. I would have done this. And it's like, buddy, do you know what, what kind of sacrifices and talent it even takes to get to the UFC, let alone be there, be in the top 10 and then be a champion. I mean, yeah, people are stupid. It's funny how people marginalize it. Like, Oh, it's just fighting. Like, yeah, it's the most primal thing that you can do. Yeah. It's everybody like has that fight in them per se but it's not just fighting like people don't understand that it's a real art and real science you know it's not it's not just going out there and throwing punches and throwing caution to the wind all the time and oh i thought i was there i would just swing and throw like dude no that's not how it works <laughs> For sure, no, man. No. I think I think Joe Rogan put it best when he said it's high level problem solving with dire consequences. Oh yeah, and high level problem solving on the milliseconds. Right. So it's you're you're, you're riding this line of oh 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 oh. When we fall off, we're gonna stay on. Oh no. Yeah. Right. And right. Catastrophe's right around the corner. Not a game of inches. It's a game of millimeters. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Now, listen, just to stick with the anger thing for a moment, I'm wondering, do you take any of that former anger that you have into the cage with you, or do you go in with a clear head every time? I have a, I have a clear head when I fight, but it's almost like a split personality, too, when I fight. Like, <laughs> the guy that fights isn't the guy you're talking to right now. Right, <laughs> right. Like, you know, um, so for me, it's the devastator. It's an actual person. <laughs> He's an actual person, and it's just... It's not that I'm angry. It's just nothing but bad intentions. Right. You have to be able to flip that switch. Like, yeah, no love, no, no kindness, nothing, nothing. For sure, man. It's just darkness. (laughs) Again, well, again, you know, I, I find, I found that funny. Like the, the, the way you said that to to Jordan, because I'm thinking to myself, man, every time I talk with him, he's a really cool guy. We're always having some laughs. And, you know, with some fighters, you can kind of tell they have a mean streak in them outside of the cage. You know, they're not very talkative or they're a little standoffish and you can kind of tell, but there's so many characters in this game and so many different personalities. It's crazy to think that some people, you know, when you talk to them, outside of competition you think wow you go in there and fight in a cage for a living that's crazy yeah i get that a lot to be honest with you um people are like wait no you don't fight <laughs> like yeah i do right I just, then, they, then they go watch I, your highlight and they start looking at yeah. you weird and shit <laughs> i was like i just let it, let it out i don't i don't carry anything with me outside of the cage there's no reason for it nothing to prove to anyone i prove it in the cage absolutely absolutely all right, man. Well, listen, as always, you've been more than generous with your time. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Just a couple more questions here for you. Uh, regardless of the opponent, do you, do you still plan on ble- being on the Dallas card? Is that the card you want on? I would love to be on the Dallas card. Yes, I do want to be on the Dallas card. Okay, and that's and like we said, that's mainly about timing. But, I mean, is there any other card or venue that you're looking at at this point? No, uh, not at this point. And, you know, or maybe Vegas in September as well, but I don't know. I, I would like to go to Dallas. I have I have a bunch of good friends out there. I've always wanted to be out there. I've always wanted to go to a Cowboy game. So 
just being in that city would be cool. Right, and it, it'd be it'd be uh, likely be a big card and a, and a great one to be a part of too. So, yeah, and Dallas fans are they know sports and they're very excitable. So I would like to perform in front of a crowd that gets it and wants. Right, right, appreciates what's going on in there for sure. And are we still on pace for your eighteen month plan for the title fight? Oh, right, right on plan. <laughs> <laughs> right on plan. Awesome. I wouldn't honestly. I wouldn't mind being Cormier's retirement fight. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that last time we spoke. You, I, I was asking you for the pick between Stipe, and you said, uh, you know, if DC loses, he's got to come down. Uh, but you wouldn't be surprised if he stayed up there if he won the fight. Uh, but you know, being his his retirement fight, that would be perfect. The the stars could align as far as timing goes for that, right? Hey, you never know. <laughs> Just gotta keep winning fights and stay optimistic. Yep, yep, that's true, man. That's true. All right, so in conclusion, if you could say anything to OSP to encourage him to take the fight, what would it be? Come on, man. Let's fight. We, well, there's nothing to worry about, you know, except for a loss. <laughs> Let's have fun, man. Let's go in there and have fun, show the fans what's up. Let's do it. Well, I certainly hope the fight gets announced soon. A fight, it would OSP would be a great matchup for you. I'd love to see that one go down. But regardless of the opponent, I look forward to you competing again. Uh, and all the continued success towards the belt. Always a pleasure speaking with you, brother. Any shout-outs or sponsor plugs before we let you go? Yeah, I'm going to shout-out uh, Cobra Kai. You know, it's my team. I'm going to shout-out my buddy Jamal Pogues fighting tonight in Be- uh, Friday in Bellator. Um, let's do Nutrition Edge, High Desert, Stein Chiropractic, Ape Man Strong, and uh, my family and my fans. Love you guys. How about uh, Juan Archuleta? He's fighting in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Juan's fighting too. And also uh, my management, Mata Leon, my team. Love you guys. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thanks again, Dom. We'll catch up again soon, brother. And Cobra, Cobra Kai never dies. Yeah, that's right. All right, man. Peace <laughs> out. All right, Dom. Later, brother. I personally feel like the matchup between Dominic and OSP makes a lot of sense for the division. Does it make a lot of sense for OSP? Probably not. Dominic is a risky fight, as you heard us discuss there. But as you've heard me talk about on this show many, many times, it's always cool to see the guys in the top of the rankings give the up-and-coming guys the opportunity to stake their claim in the top of the division. Hopefully OSP is one of those guys. He said anywhere, anytime. Dominic answered that call. Let's see if the fight gets made. If not, of course, the Devastator has plenty of options. So, let's close things out tonight with Eddie Truck Gordon, tough alumni, UFC veteran. Again, he had some ups and downs in his career, as everybody does in this wild sport of mixed martial arts. But he's really made the most of them. He's done some incredible things outside of the cage. Sounds to me like he really doesn't even need to fight, but that drive and hunger for competition has lit a fire under him yet again. He looks to make this PFL debut on July 5th in Washington, D.C., so we're going to preview that, discuss how he ended up with the PFL, all the things he's had going on outside of the cage as well. This is BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. Coming up next, Eddie Truck Gordon. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome to the show UFC veteran, Ultimate Fighter winner, who is now set to make his PFL debut on July 5th in Washington, D.C., Eddie Truck Gordon. What's going on, Eddie? How you doing today, man? Man, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for asking, and thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. Our pleasure, man. I'd imagine you've been putting in some work, Sarah Longo, and getting those final workouts in before next week. Yes, indeed. I'm actually heading to the gym as we speak, doing that that cardio and just fine-tuning the machine and ready to go out there and have a blast uh, next week. For sure, man. We're definitely looking forward to it. So you'll be making this PFL debut next Thursday against uh, Shamil uh, G- Gamzatov, I believe is how it's pronounced. First off, Cam- man, what can you tell us about your opponent? I'm, look, I'm excited, man, because, you know, he's a young, he's a, a big prospect. You know, he's uh, you know he's tough. He's from Dagestan, uh, Russia. He's got to be tough, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited, man. Undefeated fighter. Uh, I'm, I'm salivating. I'm just super, super pumped because, you know, I don't know if they're looking at this as like a, a fight to highlight him, but I'm ready to take that all away, so I'm excited. So you're looking at this as a big opportunity for you to go out there and score the upset? 
Oh, 100 percent, man. You know, like when you go, you when you match up a young guy like that, undefeated, you know, versus a, uh, I guess a veteran like myself. You know, you're almost hoping that you know this young kid could come in, uh, take out the vet, and take his fans, and, and take his fan base, and and move him up the ranks. But I'm excited, man. Uh, this is a huge, huge opportunity for me, and I'm just excited to get back in there. Give us your thoughts on the matchup. Do, do you feel like it's a stylistically favorable fight for you? Uh, I think it's an awesome matchup. I think it's a great stylistic fight for not just me, but for the fans. You know, watching his fights, you know, he likes to stand up. He likes to trade. He's got a, a bunch of first-round finishes. Um, so I think it's going to be an exciting, exciting, exciting fight. It's going to be fireworks after the 4th of July. <laughs> the day after at that so exactly. now listen man you've had a very interesting story when it comes to your career you know you won the ultimate fighter then you had some tough losses you got cut by the promotion you came back on tough and, and that didn't go your way but right after the ko of lima man I, I feel like a lot of people thought you were going to be the next big force in the ufc what went wrong in your opinion um, a lot of little things, man. You know, I, I'm actually, I look at it as almost like a blessing. A lot of people think I'm crazy because I look at it that way. But, you know, after coming off a tough, winning the whole thing, having a big finish, uh, I did a lot of my learning, you know, at the highest level. I did a lot of my fights. Half of my career was in the USC. I started at a really older age, um, and I did all my growing at the highest level. So I feel like right now I'm a baby in my career, and I'm coming into full form. And when you look at some of the losses I had at the UFC, you know, I put them all on me. Like, there's no way to blame whether I think the judges, you know, screwed me up over over Dempsey or whatever it may be. All my losses, I own them. I take them as my own, and I learn from them, and I build from them. And I'm just super excited to, to show everybody, you know, what I learned from all the experiences and the growing I did. So I'm excited. Yeah, man, I, it seems to me like you were one of those rare cases where, like you said, a guy has to come up and, and do all of his learning at the highest level, whereas a lot of people had an opportunity to fight amateur or work their way up through the through the smaller promotions and then get that big shot. You were there in your third, fourth, fifth fight of your career. Yeah, I was, I was there in my third fight, so it's like it's a gift and a curse. You know, and then I look at – I think what helps me and gets me fired up is that, you know, when I look at some of the guys that I lost to, you know, I look at uh, Josh Salmon who, who was doing amazing. He was ranked in the top 12. I was dominating that fight. Like, he, he, he threw a great time kick. He caught me with it. And, you know, kudos to him. He threw the kick. And I was winning that whole fight easily. Then I look at, you know, Antonio Carlos Jr. He's in the top, I think, seven or, 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 or five or something crazy right now. So, and that was another competitive fight. So, I'm looking at things and looking at how I did things the wrong way in the past. And I look at it as opportunity. I was able to grow. And if you look at a loss as something that's going to that's gonna destroy your life, I just want to say that if that's the worst thing that could ever happen to me, losing in a mixed martial arts fight in the UFC, then I had a really uh, blessed life. Um, and my life wasn't easy. So I look at everything as an opportunity. Absolutely, man. You know, that, that segues into my next question here perfectly. I, I feel like anybody that follows you knows that you've taken these setbacks and spun them into something positive. You wrote a book, Forever Trucking. You became a motivational speaker. Tell us about the path you've been on and, and, and how you've taken all the struggles as an athlete and in life and turned your story into something inspirational for others. Um, I think that's, you know, you, you brought up a good point, man. Like, I, I turned my life, you know, into, <laughs> into a huge success, man. I'm at the point now in life where I was able to write a best-selling book. I was able to, you know, be able to speak to kids, speak to Fortune 500 companies, and get people excited. I thought fighting was the, the end-all, be-all for me. Like, that's what I was going to impact and touch the most lives. But I was I was so mistaken. You know, writing this book, speaking to people, just the impact I've seen already in such a short period of time um, has been huge. And I just show people that. Listen, I'm a normal, everyday guy that just didn't give up on his dreams. I took up this mixed martial arts thing, you know, 27 years of age, after I had a great job in corporate America. And people thought I was crazy, but... You're never too old or never too young to, to pursue your dreams. So if somebody can learn that from me and, and, and change their life, whether they're going down the wrong paths, doing the wrong things, that to me is going to be like my true legacy. It's not going to be how many fights I win and how many houses I own, cars I drive. It's going to be about how many lives I could actually impact. Dude, if you look at Anderson Silva, I think he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. You people almost like forgot about this guy. Right. It's like, it's, it's, it's scary. You know, when you're an athlete, it's a, it's a tough road, man. You know, you're already as good as your last fight. And even if you win your last fight, if you're not active enough, people just forget about you. 
Yeah, it's a shame, man. I feel like uh, I say it all the time. The UFC has, or and mixed martial arts rather, has some of the best fans and some of the worst fans across the board. Like you're saying with athletes, right? Any other athlete that had a great career, for whatever reason, their career ends, like say football, they're praised for years to come. With mixed martial arts, man, like you said, you have a couple bad performances and you're written off and forgotten about and... Uh, you know, everything that you accomplished gets 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 brushed away. I feel like that's maybe more so the new fans, the new age fans. I think the hardcore fans have a lot more respect than that, a lot of the old school ones. But I agree, man, it's tough. But it seems to me like some of the positives out of all of this is that the responses from the public have been positive for you. You know, obviously the book being a bestseller speaks volumes to that. But looking forward here, how did all of this lead to you signing with the PFL and, and starting this new chapter of your career? I tell you what, man, it's a, it's a blessing in disguise. Um, you know, after coming off of a uh, tough redemption, you know, I had opportunity to make a decision to go to the UFC. And, you know, I know, I'm sure it's no secret with all the turmoils with, you know, new, new management, uh, sponsorships, different things. So it's like almost you got to look at it as do you want to be famous or do you want to you know, make some money off of this, you know, short window of opportunity that you have as far as fighting. Mm-hmm. And when I'm winning my options, man, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, good deals that was on the table um i kind of caught wind of this pfl thing and they reached out to me and and when i found out it was a million bucks i'm like that's life-changing money in a short period of time and you know i'm a tournament style kind of guy from wrestling to the ultimate fight i feel like it prepared me for this type of uh you know tournament and i was like oh, sure i'm on board of course and then it kind of it halted like it was like five or six months delayed and i'm thinking in my mind did i really turn down all these great opportunities uh for something that's not going to happen and then when i got the call from ray he said everything you know all the t's are crossed eyes are dotted he sent me over all the, the final contracts and it was real and so you know i think everything happens for a reason you know my book be coming out when it did you know doing my motivational speaking gave me the opportunity not to just jump at a dollar yeah. so i didn't have to run and just take up any single fight that they were offered to me um and i would pick and choose and pick the right opportunity that made sense to me so everything kind of played its role i'm not gonna lie to you the, the book was doing so well and the motivational speaking was doing so well coaching individuals you know ceos and companies i thought heck man i'm making just as much if not more money doing this stuff i don't have to get punched in the face why <laughs> right. even back why well, even go back to fighting? And it was just the competitor to be like, I-, I love doing this. Like, there's nothing. It's hard to tell somebody, you know, tell somebody how, how the adrenaline rush you get from going into the cage and competing against another athlete that's been trained, that's prepared for you. Most people can't even can't even sit through class at, at school if they know they got to fight at the school. Could you imagine waiting two, three months knowing that somebody's training to, to take your head off? It's it's a sick, sick addiction that I have. I love competing, and I'm just excited, man. I can't wait for next week. Yeah, I'll tell you, man, uh, <laughs> a lot of what you said there, I can only imagine. I tell people about this all the time, like, uh, every, everybody likes to be a keyboard warrior. And I was, a, I was actually just talking with Dom Rees about this. Uh, like I said, you know, everybody likes to be a keyboard warrior, uh, armchair quarterback and all that shit. And they, at the end of the day, what it takes to actually go out there and compete, like you say, knowing for two to three months that somebody else at a professional level at the elite level is training to take your head off. I mean, I can only imagine, and you guys don't get enough respect for that. But listen, give us your thoughts on the format. You talked a bit about it there, you know, making a million dollars, how that, li- how life-changing that is. Give us your thoughts on the format, the season of competition for each weight, the point system, and again, that opportunity to win that big cash prize. Um, I love it, man. I-, I love the format. Like, when you look at it, it takes the whole BS and the politics out of it. Guessing who's number one, guessing who's this, it makes it a true, genuine sport. And it, and it also makes it exciting because, you know, when you break it down, you know, how many points you need to get to the playoff. You win your first fight. That doesn't matter. You got to go out there and win your next fight because <laughs> you don't know if somebody's going to get a first-round finish, second-round finish, and if you squeak by with a decision. So it's going to make fighters. The first fights are going to be cool. You know, you know, PFL already has, what, Ching Raid already for the first two cards. And the second fights are going to be even crazier for each division because now guys are going to know that shoot, man, I lost my first fight. I needed a first-round knockout to, to, to give me an opportunity to, to get into the playoffs. So it's it's right there in front of you, black and white. No BS, no politics. Doesn't matter how many Twitter followers you have. Doesn't matter how popular you are. You talk your way out of it, and you're going to be fighting you know, the, some of the best guys in the world. So that's what it's all about, man. Competition, not picking and choosing who you're fighting. You know, the matchups are there, and 
you know, for or for you to win this thing, you can beat everybody or somebody that beats somebody's. Right. No, absolutely. I think that's one of the most intriguing parts of this is going back to that. I've been told to stay away from tournament format using those words, but you know, season of competition with the tournament, it's a beautiful thing. Like you said, takes out the politics. And I think that's one of the things that the sport really needs at this point. Um, you know, most people agree that the league league could change the sport for the better, give MMA athletes new and exciting options and opportunities to compete. And I'm sure you obviously talking with you, you definitely feel the same about that. Yeah, man, there's no doubt about it, man. You look at, you look at, I tell people all the time, man, you look at somebody like a Demetrius Johnson. Guy is probably, I think, one of the best, you know, fighters in the world. And you look what his pay scale is getting. CM Punk walks into the UFC and gets paid almost more than he did his whole entire career as far as fighting purse-wise. Right. And it's like you can make life-changing money in less than six months. But more importantly, <laughs> you know, they're, they're treating us, uh, you know, like high-level athletes, like, like they want us here. You know, without fighters, I don't care what promotion you fight for, no promotion can be successful without the fighters going out there and laying it on the line. So it, it's it's life-changing, man, and people don't realize it yet. And it's real now. I think now it's starting to catch eye, and people are starting to say, holy smokes, like this thing is legit. Like it's doing well. It's catching, you know, ahead of steam. And that's what it's about. It's about creating competition. This is only going to help every single fighter that's on a UFC roster or a Bellator roster, a 1FC roster, all of these different rosters. It's going to help everybody because now there's another dog in the in the yard that's willing to pay fighters. And they want, you know, we got some big names. Man. We got some big names that came over because it's, it, it's, it's, it's a life changer. For sure, for sure. And I think that this could be the next step in bringing mixed martial arts into the forefront, like a league like the NFL or the MLB or the NHL, anything like that. Just having the season, the off season and, and the way it's set up, man, I, I agree with you. This, this could be the, the big thing for all, like you said, all the promotions, just having a, a new opportunity for everybody that, that could change the game and level the playing field and all the other promotions in mixed martial arts. It's very, very exciting stuff. Uh, but I've talked about this with a bunch of guys on the roster so far. Having a guy like Ray Cepho at the helm, you know, makes a huge difference for athletes in regards to uh, feeling comfortable and appreciated by their boss. You know, since he's been in your shoes for most of his life and can truly re- relate with you fighters throughout what you're going through as athletes. You know, you're spot on, man. That's I think that was one of the big things. Like talking to Ray uh, when I was when I was like weighing out options of which promotion I was going to, you know, play with, you know, what he said to me was, hey, I was a fighter, you know, I, I've done K-1, I fought, you know, two, three fights in, in a night, and I know how hard it is, I know how, how much you go through mental, physical, emotional, and he's like, we want to make sure that we take care of you guys, and him talking like that, and, and knowing that he lived it, and he, you know, he had our best interest in mind, was, was like, was huge, so that was uh, a big part of it, and you still see it, though, man, like, like you know, doing uh, media stuff and just doing anything, like, he's passionate about it, he's literally, he's a kid in a candy store, so that, uh, that's a big part of it. For sure, for sure. Now, getting back to the season, and, and again, I'm trying to stay away from tournament format, but it, it's basically what it is. Preparing for this kind of format, does that change your approach to training at all? I mean, when you're looking at the entire playing field, or do you solely focus on one fight at a time at the task in hand? I think it's a little bit of both, man. To tell you the truth, like you, you gotta obviously, you know, focus on the task at hand. Doesn't matter who you fight next if you can't get through your first opponent. But you know, training is another thing. You gotta kind of, you gotta, you gotta gear up. You don't want to burn out on your first fight, man. You sit there and you, 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 you go crazy as if you're going to fight, you know, once or twice a year and you burn out in training camp, you barely get to the fight healthy and then you have a tough fight. And now, now what? Now you got to fight in, in four or five weeks where you're going to be able to be the best fighter in that, that, that four or five week period. So it's almost like a calculated science where you got to, you know, tailor made your, your, your training camp, you know, for, for the long haul. It's almost like a marathon. Marathon runners never run the, the actual mileage of a marathon until the actual, uh, the marathon itself. So that's kind of the mentality that I think fighters should be you know, going in with. I'm not going to tell all of them. <laughs> so right. They, they kind of pick up on it. I want these guys to burn out. Burn out all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from your opponent next week and yourself, obviously, you know, who else do you have your eyes on as a favorite when you're looking at this landscape? And, you know, how confident when you look at all these guys are you that you'll be capable of winning the entire thing? I tell you what, man, look at the division, man. I think it's a pretty good you know, stacked division. I think all these weight classes are, are, are stacked. I thought I thought I could be a MMA um, 
pick them guy and pick some of these fights, but these last two cards, a lot of upsets I did not see going the way that they did. Um, there's a lot of tough guys in this division, so honestly, I'm looking at just right now, you know, Shamil's like my main focus, you know, cliche, right? Focus on the guy I got, and then, you know, whoever I have next, I'll find out, you know, shortly. The cool thing is, everybody fights on the same night, too, so, you know, you go in there, you get to, you get to watch your, you know, your, your, uh, your adversaries, and for me, this is very similar to like being in a house. You don't know who you want to get too close with. You know, you don't know who you're gonna be fighting. So it's kind of very the same mentality. And at the end of the day, you know, we're all athletes. We're all competing. We we want the same goal. But once after we compete and finish, it's all done. So I'm excited, man, with John Howard and you know Taylor in the division. It's Rex Harris. So it's 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 a fun, exciting, exciting division. And you know, everybody wants to see the big guys go at it. So it's uh, we're like the we're like the semi big guys. Right, right. Well, you know, you, you mentioned something interesting there that I found most intriguing about this, and that's uh, you, you can't really pick guys because with the point system, everybody's going for that finish. They're gunning for that finish. I mean, I feel like uh, we might see people kind of chasing for it, you know, moving into the second round, but at the same time, man, who doesn't want to see guys go after it? So it, it is amazing that the point system is encouraging guys to look for that finish. Exactly, yes, man. It's wild, and you don't have to... You don't have to... You don't have to, to look too hard when you're talking about mixed martial arts. Anything can happen at any second. So when guys are chasing those finishes, man, you can see some crazy upsets and crazy comebacks. Like I even remember watching PFL one with you know I think Jake Jake Hume was winning the whole fight. He kept on going after the finish, going after the finish, and came in deep, got caught a, a spectacular flying knee. It was right. crazy. So you know things like that. It's gonna get the fans. It's gonna get the fans pumped up. And when I say the fans. You're not even talking about like the true mixed martial art diehard. The true diehard fans, they're gonna follow good fighters and good fights, no matter where they're fighting, whether it's local scene, the highest level. You're talking about almost like those fly by night fans. Like you, they go. To, everybody that was at the at the garden that night, they they're now mixed martial arts fans because it was probably six, seven first round finishes. Every fight was crazy. So they, 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 they didn't matter who was fighting. They were like they got that fix. They got that itch now. So it's almost like you know for them like that. That's gonna that's gonna bring in a track new fans to the, to the actual sport because the fly-by-night fans, they don't know the difference between mixed martial arts or UFC. Right, Second, a guy told right. you, hey, man, I, I UFC, that's it, the conversation's over. <laughs> you know who knows what. But it's like that, it's going to bring those kind of fans to, to, the, to, the, to the table and it's going to help the, the sport grow. Yeah, man, it doesn't get better than that first inaugural show. They, they kick things off in, in style, like you said, great finishes and incredible fights. So anybody that was watching was definitely uh, definitely captivated from that opening opening round. But um, obviously the cash prize, we talked about that, how life-changing that is. Uh, it's going to be life-changing for all the winners of this season. But what would winning this whole thing mean for you and your family in regards to you know the monetary side? It's huge, man. You know, listen. You know, I I never made a million bucks in six months of my life yet, being in finance. So it's uh it's definitely a, a goal of mine. And more importantly, it's going to be able to you know to to do other things and help other people. You know, with my foundation, I got set up. You know, it's all great when you're the only person. Uh, you know, helping people and taking care of kids. But, if, you know, for you to be able to keep doing that, you need to make sure you keep on uh, re- for reestablishing funds in that account. So for me, it's like taking care of my kids, making sure that they're not spoiled, but they don't have to sit there and want for any of their needs. And more importantly, taking care of my mom, my family, man. Like that with a million bucks, I did a couple of ways I could flip that, you know, legally and, and, and make and live off of that. So um, it's going to be huge. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're smart with your money, man, it can go a long way. And unfortunately, we see a lot of fighters not make the right decisions. But I think a lot more smartening up. And you've seen guys uh, live just fine, man, having a couple fights a year. So um, definitely be a life-changing thing. Uh, How are you doing on time? Uh, I'm doing good right now. So far, so good. I got like 10 more minutes, I think. Uh, I'm I'm actually at the gym, so all I got to do is walk in. (laughs) All right, perfect, perfect. I'm thinking maybe five more minutes if that's cool with you. Perfect, perfect. All right, changing gears here for a moment. I, I wanted to get back to the team, you know, at Cerro Longo, the, the team you're standing outside of right now. You work with some of the best in the business there in regards to coaching and training partners, and they've been a stronghold for MMA in the New York area, the Northeast area, uh, for years now. How beneficial has it been for you to work with these guys on a day-to-day basis, not only in regards to, uh, you know, building on the skills, but in regards to uh, making the right choices for your career? It's been everything, man. It's been huge. I was fortunate enough that 
I walked through the same gym that I started, you know, when I was 27 years old. I'm still here now. And more importantly, I'm, I'm doing things with, with friends I've had, you know, since I was in the ninth, ninth grade of high school. Like, you know, working with Chris Weidman, he's kind of one of the reasons I got into the sport because, you know, I ran into him and he told me, hey, give this thing a shot. We wrestled together in high school. And, you know, that took me under his wing. And now, you know, the rest is history. So I haven't been able to have to work like a regular nine to five ever since. So I'm able to spend more time with my family, you know, you know, pick Ray Longo's brain and been around the sport forever, be around a Matt Sarah who but arguably you, you could say that we had the biggest upset in MMA history. Oh, he you did. Know. He did for sure. <laughs> no no doubt about it. And, you know, and being around not one but two, you know, UFC champions who both had probably the biggest upsets, it's, it's huge, man. And just being around, you know, Aljo, Al, Drago, you know, the Frank, we got so many different young and up-and-coming guys, man. It's just, it's a great environment. The, the best part is, Everybody's hungry. Doesn't matter what level they are. They're all hungry. They're all, you know, you could come into our gym at any any given day and see, you know, the UFC champions, you know, training right next to somebody who never did a, do a punch or a kick in his life. So that that that's the cool part about it. You mentioned Drago there. How is Pete Sell doing, man? Dude, Drago's the man, man. He's dude. He's doing awesome. The guy's in freaking sick shape. I told him you better stop stop making me look bad. He's <laughs> guy. You know, he's, he's 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 on another level right now, man. He's. He, most people don't know because all his fights, he stands up and bangs, but he is one of the the best world-class grappler, grapplers, and he's teaching kids, and he's now he's working his wrestling. It's, he's a huge, huge asset for me, for the team. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful for him. Cool, man, cool. He's definitely been in some of the classic battles in mixed martial arts and, and beloved by anybody who actually knows the sport, so uh, it's cool to hear that he's doing well. But, you know, when you see a guy like Ally Aquinta having so many struggles with the UFC – being close to retirement, clashing with Dana White on the regular, uh, and you know, being how close all of you guys are, do you take a lot of advice and lessons from what he's been going through in the sport? I do. I love it. Al, Al said was on his, on his on his mind. He's an emotional guy, and I love that man. Too many guys sit there and they 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 shake their heads and then then they turn it back and say something completely different. He was emotional on his sleeve, and if anybody can learn anything from Al, man, like. You know, don't allow one hand to feed you. Then you become dependent. Al went out. He's doing his thing. He's doing amazing with real estate. He doesn't have to fight. Like, Al's making enough money in New York, I should say, because people don't realize that New York costs a lot more to live. Oh, for sure, man. He's doing amazingly well, and he's fighting because he loves it now. And he's fighting because he wants to fight. He's not fighting because he has to. And I feel like you get more leverage when you do that. You know, you got fighters got to understand their worth. I think that's what Al's bringing to the table. He's not letting fighters know that without us, there is no UFC, there is no PFL, there is no Bellator. Like, we got to realize that. We generally hold the power. If everybody stands stood united, we'll all be getting paid the money that we, that we deserve. There's no reason a company should sell for $4 billion and do another billion-dollar deal with a TV network, and you can't even account for 5% of that, that money is being in your salary or, or money you're paying out. So it's kind of crazy. No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%, man. I've been talking with people for as long as I've been doing this show about unionization and collective bargaining for you guys, and hopefully one day that that all does come. And, uh, (laughs) you know, you mentioned cost of living in New York, man. I'm from Rhode Island, commonly misconceived as uh, Long Island, but uh, cost cost of living is tough up here, man. People don't realize that. All those fighters that are down south where everything's cheap, man, trying to live in New York on a fighter's pay when you're not at the highest level, that's got to be really tough to do. It, it's, it's crazy, man. It's wild. That's how my family thought I was out of my mind. I walked in for a six-figure income to fight for peanuts <laughs> at first, and you know it all paid off now. But in the beginning, I was like, man, what the hell did I do? What am I, I'm getting punched in the head instead of you know sitting there taking somebody's money to a deposit or something. It was it was crazy, but you know it definitely worked out, and I got a better quality of life now, man. I get to enjoy my kids, be around my kids, and do things like that. So that that was the that was the end game win for me. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, man, you've been more than generous with your time, Eddie. Just a couple more questions here for you. Uh, getting back to July 5th, man, will Matt and Ray be in your corner for the fight? Unfortunately, unfortunately, and fortunately, they won't be able to because Matt's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame that day. So oh, he's that's, got right. a little, that, that's a little bit important thing that he's got going on. So, and Ray's actually doing his speech for him. So it's, um, it's almost like, uh, 
it's uh, a little bit down, but I'm actually super excited because Matt, nobody deserves it more than Matt, and nobody deserves that more than Ray. Um, but I'm fortunate that we have an amazing staff here, so I have uh, you know some of my team coming and coaches that are coming. I've been working with this camp, so that's that's the one thing, man. We're a family, so we're never too short of uh, of good coaches. So a couple of our coaches took a sacrifice for me and is coming to the fight instead of going out to to, to celebrate with Matt. So I'll be there with him in spirit. Absolutely. That's a, that's a bit of a bittersweet thing, but like you said, nobody's more deserving. And, you know, we talked about uh, the team and, and having all the benefits of working with everybody, having the guidance of Matt Serra, man, that's got to be invaluable as an athlete coming up. Dude, he is like, like, obviously, you know, I'm a little bit biased, right? But when I say the best coach, like, dude, if anybody done jujitsu in their life and they, they, they go to one of his classes, he is genuine. He's just an amazing human being. Like, it's unreal. Like, he is a, a, a gift beyond gifts, man. It's a, it's a blessing. And you don't want to talk about wise. He knows the sport. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. It's it's it's, it's life-changing. Like, when guys come in and just, you know, train with, with wide men or just pick Matt's brain, they almost don't want to leave. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So, listen, in conclusion – Tell us all how you visualize this fight playing out. What's the prediction if you have one? And why does everybody need to make sure that they tune into NBC Sports on July 5th? Man, everybody needs to tune in because it's going to be an absolute battle. It's going to be a war. It's going to be exciting, man. We're going to go out there. We're going to lay it on the line. I don't think we're going to need judges for this fight. I know Shamil's going to be going out there hunting for the finish. I'm going to be going out there hunting for the finish. And it's going to be exciting. All I know is that it's guaranteed fireworks July 5th. So... Don't worry about it. They, they run out of all the fireworks on the 4th. We'll make sure we bring something to the deck gun. <laughs> all right, man. Listen, Eddie, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. I look forward to the fight. Hopefully we can catch up again soon. Uh, feel free to get in any shout-outs and, and plug your book before we let you go, man. Oh, I appreciate it, man. man uh, I made it really simple for everybody now, man. You can go ahead and follow me on social media. Uh, Instagram is Truck Gordon. My uh, Twitter is truckma underscore. UFC, um, you know, go check out my website, www.eddietruckgordon.com. Everything is there. Got to update it because, you know, us fighters, we're procrastinators. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, you know, my book's available, Barnes & Noble's, Amazon, Forever Trucking, Master in the Will to Win. It's a, it's a great read. I'm biased because I wrote it, but it's definitely changing lives. And to all my sponsors, you know, I'm happy I can actually say that. I'm allowed to have sponsors for this fight. Uh, they've been amazing, you know, Shine in the Darkness Enterprises, you know, Art of Winning Show, uh, Bodies app. It's a, you, you guys have been just great. I know I'm forgetting a couple of them because I'm sitting in the gym getting ready to go get tortured. But um, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll make sure I'll, I'll give them a shout-out uh, throughout this, this, this fight week. But it's just been, it's just been an amazing, humbling experience. And I'm excited. I'm actually looking forward to this fight uh, more than anybody could possibly believe because it's going to be an exciting one. Awesome, man. The journey continues. Forever trucking. You keep on trucking, brother. Thanks again for the time today. Best of luck on the 5th, and have a great training session, my man. Thank you so much, brother. All right, you have a good night. You too. Have a good one. Later. All right, there you have it, Penn Nation. Another successful episode. BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. This has been episode 86. We greatly appreciate the time of all of our guests this evening. We greatly appreciate your time as well. Make sure you guys share, subscribe, like this show, like this podcast. Make sure you guys bookmark bjpen.com forward slash MMA news. Follow us on social media. Stay up to date. All the exclusive content, the breaking news, the hot topics, you name it, we got it. Everything you crave from the sport you love at Mixed Martial Arts, bjpen.com. We have got you covered, guys. So on behalf of the whole squad, the whole scrap squad, as I like to call them, greatly appreciate you guys joining us yet again. Make sure you tune in next week. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your host, Jay Kinch. Until next time, my friends, peace out, everybody.